Hello, welcome to Statistics 1. With the virus lurking around, I'm going to make some online classes. So in this video, we're going to talk about frequency tables and uh, frequency distributions. They are used to grab a big picture of the data to understand, illustrate the data a little bit in a more comprehensible fashion. So a frequency table groups the data into classes and those classes are mutually exclusive, meaning each observation can only be present in one of the classes and those classes are also exhaustive, meaning that they include all the observations of the data you are grouping. Now let's have a look at an example and see how we make this frequency table. Let's say you have this bunch of data here this is the profits from the cars that you sell. Say you run this car dealership business and you have uh, showrooms in, uh, let's say, four cities. London, Belfast, Liverpool and Newcastle. That's a lot of data. If you look at it, it's hard to grasp anything meaningful from this big list of data. So let's say what you want to do is uh, have a look at how all these different locations are doing. You can get an idea of that from a frequency table. So let's make one. Click anywhere within this table. Then go to the data tab. Sort. Sort by location because that's what we're interested in at the moment. And here we have it. I'm going to count how many Belfast entries are here. How many Liverpool entries and so on. I'll do that by just extending these numbers until I see a change in the city. I'll do that for Liverpool as well, London and Newcastle. So I'm going to place this frequency table over here, enter the four locations and the number for how frequently Belfast appears, that's 38. Liverpool 41, London 51 and Newcastle 50. So that's the first subtopic for chapter 2, frequency table. Moving on to relative frequency table, it shows that same frequency in percentages, in relative terms. To get a relative frequency table, I want to divide each of these frequencies for each of the locations by the total number. So let's find the total and use a formula like this with F4 to find the relative frequency table. Our next subtopic in this second chapter, frequency distribution, similar to the frequency table we're just looking at another variable of interest. Say for example now I'm interested in the profits, more specifically in the distribution of those profits rather than the distribution of sales by location. First let me delete all of this, I don't need it. Next I will need a couple of things to show you how to get to that frequency distribution and those things are minimum and maximum profits. For that we can use these min and max formulas. Next, I have to decide how to split these different levels of profits into different classes. So there are, as you see, 180 observations for car sales. And the way to split these profits into different classes starts with calculating an appropriate number of classes. Let's call it K. We're going to find K so that 2 into the power of K is equal or greater to the number of observations. Our number of observations is 181. So let me see which power of 2 brings me to at least 181. I'm going to use this formula equals 2 into the power of whatever I have on the left hand side. Stretch it and I need the power of 8 to get at least to 181. So I'm going to have 8 classes. Next, how do we split this range of profits from 335 to 331 into 8 classes? We're going to calculate a class interval, which is going to be our maximum minus our minimum divided by the number of classes, 8. I want to round this up a little bit, so I'm going to choose 400 for my class interval. In that case, my formula-based range is going to be 400 times 8 classes, which is 3200. But actual range is minimum minus maximum which is only under 3000. So I have a bit of extra range here. This extra is almost 200 difference. I'm going to split this extra 200 by 2 to give 100 extra range to the lowest and the highest class. So the low side, the range starts from 335 
give it an extra 100, I can start from around 200. So in my frequency distribution, I'm gonna have something like 200 to 600, because 400 is a class range, and continue with the rest of the classes in the same way. Once I do that, you see that the higher range, the highest class, also has around 100 points extra. Approximately equal to the extra points for the lowest range. So these are the classes in the frequency distribution and I need the frequencies themselves. For that I just go back to this large table, to these two columns, click anywhere there, go to data sort by profits this time. And my, for my first range up to 600, I see that there are only 8 cars that have been sold with these profits. For the next range up to 1000, 11 observations. For the next range up to 1400, 23 observations. For the next class up to 1800, 38 observations, 22 observations up to 2000, 45 observations up to 2200, 32 observations up to 2600, 19 observations up to 3000, and 4 observations for the rest. So that's my frequency distribution. So we've done with frequency tables and distributions. Next let's have a look at some charts. For today we're going to look at simple charts, bar charts, and pie charts. You probably agree that this frequency table is a bit easier to read than all of this huge amount of information here, but the chart might actually be even better. So to make a chart, I select this information within this frequency table, go to insert, and select this bar chart over here. You can tinker around over here in the design to give the chart a title, give the series a name and all that thing. You can show the values here for the bars, because sometimes it might be difficult to read what's exactly the number that this bar corresponds to. I'll leave it for you to play around. Next, next, let's have a look at a pie chart. Again, I'm going to select this, go to insert, and a pie chart over here. If you want, you can add labels here. Click anywhere on this pie chart, right click, add date labels. There they are. Once we've done the charts, of course, we're going to be able to read those charts. So the largest class is this large dark blue one. That's between 1800 and 2200. And the midpoint within that class is 2000 So basically you could say that a typical price per car that you sell is about $2,000. Stay healthy and have a nice day.